it's time to dish with D. That's me. Thank you for clicking on this video, making yourself a priority. I'm T. So it is Saturday, July 1st. Hot damn. How did this happen? How did we get into July? <clears throat> Happy July 1st. Are you where <clears throat> are you where you want to be? It's the first thing in the morning for me, and you can see I haven't talked much. <laughs> I sound like, I don't know. We'll be a hot mess. I'm doing my best. Let's rewind the tape like Weight Watchers likes to tell us. <clears throat> Let's go over the month of June. And this voice is not going to get much better. <clears throat> I wanted to say last week, but I didn't. I for, kind of forgot. But I didn't realize I think that was last way in for June as well. Overall, how was the month of June for me? Not how I, did I do. You know, I can't go by week to week all the time because sometimes we have these things called a fluctuation and you know you had a good week so you knew that that really didn't come from you like when I gain weight and I know that I ate poorly I get it but when I'm usually good and that scale doesn't show it yeah I kind of you know you get bummed out but you know in your mind you did the best week you could you can't let that scale define you we say this all the time so for the overall month of June I was down 2.4 pounds I was like yeah I was down the month of May. I don't remember how much, so I should have looked that up. I was down the month of May. I don't think it was nowhere near 2.4 pounds. I think it was like, I think a pound or a half a pound, something like that. So I finished out the month in the whole, like it is a average. It's not week to week to week. It's the average for the month. I was down. Does it matter what the week said? In the end, what was I down for that month? So that's how I look at it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're a week-to-week -week person. You, you live and die by the scale. Please don't. Please realize that that scale does not define. And the way the world is right now, the scale's not our friend. And I'm not sure why that is, but I'm noticing everybody's having scale issues. I don't know. I think it's just something weird in the air, honestly. I just feel like all of a sudden people are complaining. I've never seen this much complaint. I don't know. I know you don't want to hear from me, but I'm not going to say it. But that's just what I feel. Um, and I've been validated for that. <clears throat> so I feel like we just have to keep doing what we're doing. There's no reason to give up the ship and say, well, I'm not going to lose and do what I need anyway. So what? No, we just got to, we got to keep it at bay. We got to keep ourselves in that zone. So down 2.4 pounds for the month of June. I am excitedly happy with that. Better than May. So that was a good thing. You know, I I consider that a great month. How did you do this week on the scale? I was up 0.4. For the month of July, first way in for July, I'm already in the hole. But it's 0.4. And I look at it, you know, it's a fluctuation. Ask me, did you have a good week, Denise? I did. I had a great week. So for me, I think it's just a fluctuation. I don't feel like I deserved any kind of a gain because I don't feel like I did poorly enough to deserve it. So that's what you have to remember. Rewind the tape. What did I eat? There was anything there that be like, oh yeah, maybe that was it. Oh, that could have been it. No, I had a really good week. I was on plan. I was eating well. I did well. So I'm proud of my week. The scale's going to say what the scale's going to say. That needs to be on a mug. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know, it's a holiday weekend. So so I'm already going into the holiday weekend under the gun. Does that mean I'm I'm just going to sit there and, and have a horrible weekend? I'm going to, I already have things that I know we're going to have. I'm not going to change my plan because, ooh, the scale said I was up 0.4. That means I have to, oh, I better not eat that. I better not eat that. No, I planned out what I was going to eat. Is it going to be more points on a holiday? It sure is. Is that normal? It sure is. I'm not on a diet that I'm going to sit there and say, well, it doesn't matter that it's a holiday. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to go stick to my plan and I'm going to, you know, starve myself or not eat all, you know, you know, life's short. Go to a party, enjoy it. Yes, you'll go over in points, but you know, that's, that's what parties are. That's what holidays are, where we spend a little bit more. We don't eat our face off though. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying go in there and eat your face off. Did I say that? No, I did not. But go and have a little bit more. Maybe have a bun on your burger or hot dog. Or if you want to have both, maybe have both. But don't have the bun. You know, kind of, you know, find a lower point option, a wrap, or, or make a nice burger salad if you want to have the hot dog and the burger. If you want to enjoy some potato salad, enjoy some potato salad. 
not the whole freaking plate of potato salad. You know, you could have a little quarter cup of potato salad. Look up in the app, look up the portion size, stick to it. Have a beautiful vegetable salad. Have an ear of corn. Have some fruit. Enjoy the party. Indulge. Maybe have one adult beverage. Possibly two. I think you should. If you're a person who enjoys adult beverages and it's a holiday, you absolutely should allow On my cruise, I had two adult beverages a day. It was my holiday. And yes, that's what you do. You might not agree with me on that. You don't have to. You can, but I'm telling you what is normal behavior. What is lifestyle behavior? If you have that diet mentality where you're definitely not eating that, I'm not having that adult beverage. I don't want to waste the points on it. Then go ahead. But realize that life's passing us by. Do you want to sit back watching it or do you want to sit there and being involved in a controlled way? When you allow yourself to have something, you desire it less. If you're sitting there staring at somebody's, let's say you're at a party and there's some kind of party food there that you refuse to eat because ugh, I'm on Weight Watchers or I'm on a healthy diet. I don't eat that. I don't eat like that anymore. But you sit there and your mind wants it. I'm gonna eat that. I'm gonna eat that. I guarantee you, you're going to dive into that bowl head first. So why not give yourself a little bit, enjoy it. Drink your water and your adult beverage. Have both. I will say, if you're going to have an adult beverage, have a water with you. I will tell you what makes life easier for me drinking water is doing it. I know it sounds weird. Like, we mean? Getting, if I wait for the desire to fill it up, I'm not going to do it. If I just, the mechanics of I grab the water, throw it with ice, fill it up, I will drink it. But if I wait for myself to sit there and think, I need to fill my water bottle up, I'm not going to do it not going to do it. So I just do it. I just get it filled and I sit it next to me. I might not drink all of it, but I'll drink more than I would have if I waited for the desire to grab that water bottle. So we've been talking way too much. I gave you the, the overall toll. I gave you today's toll. And let's talk about the weekly topic. I didn't even ask for the, the, for the Wednesday wisdom questions yesterday. I have a hot mess. We'll do it next week. A surprising way to be more active. Ooh, you know, my favorite topic is always exercise. Having trouble staying active when your usual routine gets thrown off? Totally normal. As humans, we love the path of least resistance. I can say that about the water bottle. That's where a science-based idea called friction comes in. Let's explore. Try this. Consider an activity you do instead of being active. Um, watching Netflix would be for me. Um, scrolling the interwebs would be me. I guess they're cooking an activity, so I would, I'm, not, I'm not in the kitchen that much. So this one has sleeping in. Oh, that's a good one. Watching television, scrolling TikTok. Two of the three things. Well, I would, I would do four. I would do the third one, too. Think about it. How your environment makes it easier to do that thing. I quickly press snooze and fall back to sleep in a dark room. I will tell you, I don't, I haven't snoozed in over 20, maybe 30, no, longer than that. Over 35 years, I think, maybe 30. I, I realized snooze just made me feel more tired. And I finally figured out that I just slept, whatever I wanted to get up, that's what my alarm was. The heck with the snooze. I tried to tell my son that, I said, it makes you more tired when you hit the snooze. Those little in-between sleeps, you're better off just sleeping till then and then I'd be in that deep sleep a little bit longer. The couch, the pillows, the soft blankets always look so cozy. And they always are. My phone is practically glued to me, and I open TikTok whenever I crave a break. Um, <clears throat> yes. Brainstorm ways to make the behavior harder to do than pick one to try. I'll sleep with the curtains open to let in morning light. So this way, you can't sleep with the sun setting in your face. And plug my phone across the room. Next time, my fitness... And next to my fitness clothes, working shoes and headphones. So you're more apt to grab your phone and grab your fitness clothes. Not really. That one I don't go for. Because if you don't want to work out, I don't care. Your fitness clothes can be on. Doesn't mean you're going to do it. So that one's a hard, that one's I, I disagree. <laughs> Let's dive deeper. 
going for a walk right now after school drop off gardening before dinner saturday yoga with a friend routines are magic for staying active you don't have to put a lot of effort into deciding whether to do it or even when to do it or just do it as i said about the water bottle just fill it just fill it up and i guarantee you will drink more than you would have if you thought about i really should drink that water i should really fill that water bottle up i really segue good into this i didn't you know that change that changes when something or someone interferes with your routine so if you find yourself defaulting to whatever is in front of you sleeping in after a late night instead of getting up and walking or scrolling the social media instead of finding a new yoga class to go on vacation you know that's normal finally they're calling us normal see it's abnormal to do the other thing it's abnormal to do the things we they just said it oh my goodness it also is Hackable. By making the sedimentary behavior more difficult, behavioral scientists call it adding friction. The additive option becomes easier, setting you up for success. Does that mean you shouldn't ever sleep in or lounge on a vacation? Of course not. Think of it as a way to interrupt the automatic and natural desire to do what is easiest instead of nudging you towards what you ultimately want to do. Stay active and Move more towards your goals. I don't really want to be more active, but I need to be. See, there's the thing. We don't want to do these things, but we have to do these things. And that's where they kind of make the disconnect for me there. Because it's not, we don't want it. We want to be, we want to lose weight. How do we do it? Those are the ways. Do we want to be more active? Hell no. I don't want to be more active. I don't want to exercise. But I know to achieve my goals, I have to. And I will tell you to find something that you enjoy doing, not something that somebody out there tells you this is what they do and you should do it too. Yeah, just because they like it doesn't mean you're going to like it. Let's do three fast facts. Fuel is what behavior scientists call anything that makes your behavior easier to do. Friction is anything that makes your behavior more challenging to do. Humans tend to do things that require the least amount of friction. Yes, we want it easy. We're human. There you go. We are human. We want it easy. So how could we do things to make it better? Well, I always say, <clears throat> you know what I'm going to say? Grab a buddy. People will entice you to do things. You will do it because she's depending on you to do it. Eventually, I'm hopeful that because she wants you to do it so much, you'll eventually want to do it yourself. It might. I mean, say you have a walking buddy. You go walking with every day. And one day she can't make it. Do you go, well, she's not going to, I'm not going to go. Or do you say, you know what? I'm still going to go because I want to do it for me. We're hopeful that they become habits and things that you want to do that you ultimately know that's best for you. Because sometimes when we feel better, we want to do more. So that's a hard one because it takes a while for us to get into that feel better stage. If you've got a lot of weight to lose, you don't feel like moving your body because it hurts. It hurts. It hurts to move that body. It does. But I think because the body hasn't been moved in a while, that's why it hurts. And I think small steps to those goals will make things feel better. You know, there's a lot of weight on some of our joints. They will hurt. Knees, ankles, hips, backs, shoulders. They carry our weight. They work hard for us. So yeah, who wants to sit there and, and work out in pain? I don't. And should you? No. The doctor told me if you're in pain, you shouldn't do it. So we have to sit there and find a happy medium. Whereas we're getting something in, but we're not in pain. Find something that's comfortable. Work and you can build on that. Whatever you, it's something you find, well, I can do this. I can do chair exercises. Well, do them. Do something. And then once some of the weight comes off, you will get some of that weight off of those joints and those ankles and those knees and those hips won't hurt so much. You can do a lot of damage putting a lot of weight on a weak joint. Yes, you can. Do you want to be laid up? That will just be 10 times worse because then you're on your back and then you're not going to be doing anything. So we try to get baby steps. Try to find a buddy. Try to find a, a video that's something that you can do. Again, we're not going to do it to, for enjoyment because there's nothing on there that we enjoy. We don't enjoy exercise or movement. We don't. We enjoy eating, unfortunately. Um, but we have to find this new norm and maybe finding a little bit into each direction 
might help. Maybe adding something to something you enjoy. Like, I don't like walking on the treadmill, but I like, you know, going through TikTok. Well, put TikTok on the little um, device, your phone or a pad while you're walking. Or listen to podcasts while you're taking a walk. Or listen to a funny, listen to Dish With D's live. You can get a lot out of that while you're walking and getting, and you can, so I try to be funny and entertaining too. So in case somebody is listening, they can get a little bit of everything out of it. You know, find something that you enjoy, add your fuel with your friction to create a little bit of, you know, cohesiveness, you know, fuel and friction work well together. So maybe find something, but find a friend, find a buddy, find a chat buddy. If you don't have a buddy near you, find somebody in our group. I've seen people put out there, hey, I need a buddy, and somebody answers. I'll be your buddy because it's an online buddy. We all have fake book, as I call it, Facebook. So you could all sit there and chat through Facebook and in Messenger and talk to each other and say, hey, how you doing today? I'm not doing well. What could I do to help? What could I say? Sometimes, you know, even though you could be a very negative person for yourself, you could be a very positive person for somebody else because in your head, you know, this is what you need to hear. Even though you can't say it to you, but you could say it to her. And you know what? Vice versa for her, too. Because she can't say it for her, but she knows she can say it for you. Because we know that we know the right things to say. We don't always want to listen. But sometimes when somebody else tells us, it's like, okay, light bulb moment. We have a lot of those light bulb moments. So always try to try to put your friction and your fuel together to form a cohesive machine. Ooh, that was a good one. Cohesive machine. That's what we should title this cohesive machine. How do I get things done? But don't sit there and make them unattainable. Like, it's good to have goals. It's great to have goals. But goals are only good if we could achieve them. If we're sitting there staring at them and it's they're unattainable, then they're just wishes. So we need to just make small, you know, accountable, accountable or small achievable goals small ones they may seem really relatively like oh my god i should be able to do that but you build on that but don't make a goal this high when you're right here because it's you want to fuel positivity positivity makes you climb that ladder like i said i i went into weight watchers having those 120 pounds talk about friction talk about i couldn't set that goal that goal was i i looked at that goal and i i wanted to leave I looked, I said, I need to leave. I need to leave. And I thought, no, you can't leave. You're going to die if you leave. But just do, just lose consistently. You know, um, my goal is to lose two pounds. My goal is to lose then three pounds, then four pounds, then five, then six, and seven. Then all of a sudden you're at 10 pounds. You get your little ribbon. Oh my God, I got my ribbon. I'm 10 pounds. And then you get 15. You get your charm. And that's 25. You get your charm. It's 50. You get your charm. It's 75. You get your certificate and your charm. So you have to build on that. You can't walk into anything and expect to be number one. Expect to crush it. I'm going to crush it. Yeah. You're not crushing anything but your, but your mojo. What you need to do is you need to just sit there and do your plan. Whatever plan that is. I say this all the time. Plans are plans. If you're not following them, it doesn't matter what the plan is. You could, There's millions of plans out there. We see it all the time. You know, we got Weight Watchers. We got Keto. We got Paleo. Pescatarian. Um, low Carb. Calories. Macros. Any of those plans work. They all work if you follow them. The thing of it is, if we're not following this plan, so we're going to jump to that because it's, she's losing and I think I could do better on that. Well, sure, if you follow that plan, and we usually always lose in the beginning of any plan because it's new and we follow it. But once we're on it, it's kind of like then we go back to our old ways of not doing anything. And then it doesn't work. And then we're like, we blame the plan. Oh, this plan isn't working either. I don't know because you're not following it. There is, there is, you know methods behind these plans there is science behind these plans how they work and if we don't do those they're not going to work for us and it's any plan any plan any plan will work if you follow it that is a big 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 misconception people think it's the plan it's not the plan it's us because these plans wouldn't be there if they didn't work but we don't follow them because we think we know more than the plan oh i know how to do this i don't need to do that i can i'll just do my i'll just do my thing uh, you know, well, your thing obviously isn't working if you're still here following another yet another plan. And I'm guilty of that. I am guilty of that. 
I, I admit that. I admit that I don't follow the plan like I supposed to. We need to work on that. We need to work on our following the plan. Well, that is it for today. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll end on that note. I didn't ask the, the questions for the Wednesday was I apologize. I totally forgot. I remembered then I forgot. I was out yesterday. I forgot. So I apologize. There's no Wednesday wisdom today. We won't want I will apologize. We will work on that. We will work on getting better at that. So if you enjoy the Weight Watchers meeting topic of the week, please let me know in the comment section below. Let me know how you did this week. How you did last month. How was your June? Let's look at it that way. It's a definitely a different angle of looking at it in a more positive way because week to week doesn't always work for everybody, you know? It doesn't help people. There's people, let's face it, people on maintenance don't get weight but, but once a month because that's the true indication of how your month was, not week to week. So don't be afraid of that scale. And uh, let me know. I think I said let me know how you did in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video, you know to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Dish with D. I don't even know what to say. We we support any plan that you choose. We are a lifestyle channel of healthier lifestyle living and fun food. We do ice cream here. That's right. We do ice cream on this channel. We do cakes. We do mug pies. Mug pies mug cakes we do whoopie pies and fun stuff like that why because that should be on your plan and if it's not we need to talk so i will dish with you another day i will have uh what i eat in a day up probably monday because of tuesday being a holiday i think i'll just put up on monday so look forward to seeing that and some tastings on there and that is it for me drink your water Know where your bathrooms are, said Chit Chat Paddywhack. I'll have a, have a great holiday. Enjoy your food wherever you go. Be mindful of what you eat, but enjoy what you eat. And yes, yes, you can go over your points that day. It's okay. Back on track the next day. That's how you live life. So I am living life and I encourage you to join in with me. If you know somebody that can benefit from this video or needs weight loss coaching, share this video. I would love to have them as part of our community of waste watching warriors here at Dish with D. So I will talk to you in my next video.